23. What are the possible products when X and Y reacts with HBr? I've drawn um, the structures at the bottom. Understand that HBr, the hydrogen could have been here, the Br will be here, or it could be Br here, hydrogen on the other side. So same for Y, it could be H and then Br, or Br and H. So I'll use these two, these four structures to show the possibilities. So we have H, Br, H, Br. Right? These are the possibilities that can come from X. For Y, we have H on the left, Br, Br, H here. And so we compare to the options line by line. That will be less confusing, I feel. The first option A um, will not be correct because from here we can see that there's only two bromine atoms. So straight away, okay, this option is wrong. So we go to B, CH3, 2CH, CBr3, that is corresponding to this, CH3, 2, CBr, CH, Br2, 2CH, Br, C, H, and Br2, that's for this. And then the third one, 1 methane, CH3, C, Br, 2. That means 2 bromines on the same atom. CH, Br, CH3. So this is the structure they're looking for. So quite a bit of comparison. Just be systematic. Okay, you should be able to get the structures out. So B is the one that will show three of the four products. 24. Um, spend some time trying to see what are the possible ones and all that. And you know, actually drew out the octane structure and try to cover and compare what are the possible fractions that can come out. Then ultimately realize that actually so long as you have smaller molecules than you started off with, the smaller molecules will all be more or less feasible. Okay, I repeat, if you just have smaller molecules than 8 in a row, these are all feasible molecules okay, because that's the idea of cracking. So actually, A is the answer. 25. We have an SN2 reaction. SN2 means there's two molecules involved in the first step reaction, the slow step. So what we have is a nucleophile, OH, that will be attacking the partial positive carbon here. Why partial positive here? Because your chlorine is electronegative. That will make your carbon partially negative, uh, partially positive. So we will have this structure like C where there's bond forming and bond breaking at the same time. Okay. Two molecules are involved at the rate determining step. Why not D here? Well, this is wrong. It should be partially positive, if anything. The partial negative belongs to the nucleophile here. So C is the answer. 26. We get X and we reflux it, we oxidize it, and then after oxidizing, we get the product and try to react with sodium. It gives off hydrogen. So the product might contain hydroxyl group or acidic group. It does not react with 2,4-DMPH, so it's not a ketone or aldehyde. Anyway, after refluxing with dichromate, we will not expect any aldehyde. If anything, the aldehyde will become an acid. So it's not a ketone. Does not react with ethanol to form an ester. So it is not an acid group. So after all that, we realize that at the end, after refluxing, the organic product still contains a hydroxyl group. So as you go down the group, what was its original compound? It was an alcohol. So how can an alcohol still remain as an alcohol after reflux? Okay. 
that means it's actually a starts off as a tertiary alcohol and then after refluxing it remains as an alcohol that will react with sodium doesn't react with 2,4-DMPH and doesn't react with ethanol to form an ester a compound has the following properties liquid room temperature does not mix completely with water does not give steamy fumes does not give steamy fumes with PCL5 it means it does not have the OH group whether it's COOH or alcohol group okay, because these groups will, re will be replaced by CL when there's PCL5 or PCL3 so what could Y be? it can't be ethane okay, because ethane is a gas at room temperature pressure ethanoic acid statement 1 is correct it does dissolve in water because of hydrogen bonding so statement 2 is wrong it does contain COOH which will give off steamy fumes with PCL5 so statement 3 also wrong ethanol statement 1 is correct it does not mix completely with water is wrong it has um, hydrogen bonding so it will mix with water and again because of the OH it will also give fumes with PCL5 the answer will be D Okay, liquid doesn't mix well with water your esters don't, don't, uh, doesn't mix well with water and it doesn't have a OH group it will not give HCl fumes Twenty-eight. Reacting a dibromo compound with ammonia, we will get this structure here. So what is actually happening is we have two places that have bromine atoms, and the bromine atoms, either one of them will be replaced by NH two. So what we have, one, two, three, four, five number one carbon and the fifth carbon are actually joined together so that is where the bromine actually originally were okay, I'll explain it from the original structure number one bromine number five bromine okay, because carbon number one joined to carbon number five what happens is the bromine either one of them was replaced by NH2 I'll choose this one Okay, it's the same if you choose this one and the NH2 with the lone pair, it will be a nuclear file. It will replace, it will attack this carbon here, which is partially positive, and then this bromine will be gone together with one hydrogen. So that's why we have a ring one, two, three, four, five. Number one joined to number five here. In other words, the bromine must be located in these two positions if you want to work backwards using this structure what you can do is you cut off this bond you place a bromine here carbon number 5 and you replace this with a bromine here carbon number 1 and then you get back your 1,5 dibromo octane Twenty-nine we have proper known and an ester so we have ketone we have an ester which reagent will not have a reaction with this ketone and ester HCl will react with your ester it will hydrolyze it so that will be out HCN with KCN, this one will react with your ketone, undergoes a step up reaction. So, will be out. Sodium will not react with ketone, nor ester. So, that's your answer. Your reducing agent will be able to reduce your ketone. So, answer will be C, which doesn't react with both ketone and ester.
thirty. Which one will decolorize dichromate but not bromine water? So ethanol will be oxidized. So will decolorize dichromate, but ethanol will not react with bromine water. And if you check some of the other examples, ethene will decolorize if it's hot, undergoes oxidative cleaving. It will also decolorize bromine water. Ethanoic acid will not react with dichromate, or neither will it react with bromine water, and butane will also not react with both. Thirty one. Which of them have a regular trigonal planar shape? I've drawn out the structures here. They all have three bond pairs and no lone pairs. So all of them actually have trigonal planar shape, 120 degrees. Okay, CH3 plus, remember, it's actually missing the one unpaired electron. So there's no lone pair here. Thirty-two. Ammonia and chlorine reacts. If you can check whether there's oxidized or reduced, oxygen atom is oxidized. Or oh, nitrogen atom is oxidized. Nitrogen we have minus three, zero, and minus three here. So only part of the nitrogen atoms were oxidized. Some of the nitrogen atoms were remains um, as minus three. So not all of them are oxidized. All chlorine atoms are reduced. We have six chlorine atoms, all of them become minus one, all of them are reduced. Ammonia behaves like a base. Ammonia, NH3, it becomes NH4 plus. So it's actually accepting a proton. That is the definition of a base. So two and three are correct. <coughs> 